Hi folks, it might sound pretty weird to you, but whenever I go abroad, one of those things that really fascinates me, and it might be a bit of a random thing, but it's like going into these foreign supermarkets and looking on the shelves. <laughs> Look what they call Chris, aren't they silly? No, 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 don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about things like cock soup, uh, veggie poo, or even mega pussy crisps. Mega pussy crisps. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, we're alright. I'm talking just about that stuff that you walk into the supermarket and you take it for granted. And we've got like a whole worldwide community right here, and I just go to my supermarket and I get stuff on the shelf, and you're like, oh, what is that? So here's a few things from the UK that you might not know about. You might better get it in your country, you might be lucky but you might just want to give it a try. All right, so number one is twiglets. Now these are not twigs, although they do look a lot like them. Uh, if you were to go round the woods and pick up a load of twigs and then dip them in Marmite, Vegemite, yeast extract, whatever you want to call it, and then eat them, that's essentially what a twiglet is. And these old lady's fingers are pretty darn addictive too. They're baked, whole wheat, and they're actually pretty darn like tasting like uh, flatbread or crisp bread. Very addictive. But you pass them around the room at Christmas time, some people are like, <clears throat> and others are dumping, dumping? Jumping right in there, one in the face, like that. And that is just how I feel. Now the only downside to Twiglets is it makes your hands pretty darn dirty. I've only dunked them in there a couple of times, and look at my fingers. They're pretty darn dark and dirty and Oh yeah, it does come off, but that is super, super strong. So if you're thinking of carrying out a crime and you want to cover up your fingerprints, take some twiglets along, baby. Next up is After Eights, and I know some of you don't know what these are, because when I made a giant one with James, uh, some of you were like, what is an After Eight? So, uh, let me show you. So After Eights are like a sophisticated chocolate, and they come mainly around Christmas time, but you can get them all year round in the shops here, and they come in an individual sheath. Yeah, so it's in an individual sheaf or parcel, if you want to call it that, and they come out like that. It's like a real thin, rich dark chocolate surrounding a very strong mint, which is almost the same strength as toothpaste. Maybe you could brush your teeth with these, I don't know. So we snap it, like that, and look how thin that layer is. Trust me, these things are super addictive. I don't know why they're called after eights, but in all the marketing you see, it tells you to only eat them after eight. Even the sheaf has got like a clock with five past eight on it. Well, it's 20 past nine in the morning right now, I'm pretty confident nothing bad's gonna happen. What? <coughs> Next up is Tunnock's Tea Cakes. Now these things are amazing. Tunnock's. Tunnock's Tea Cakes. And they come individually wrapped in foil, like NASA style, so be careful if you have fillings, don't get that electric shock thing. Uh, I don't, but you know, you could have bad teeth, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so this is basically a chocolate dome of marshmallow with a biscuit base, and I really wanna make a giant one of these. When you bite into it, mm. It's so good. And that's all it is, simplicity. Biscuit base, loads of marshmallow and chocolate surrounding it. When you bite into it, sometimes you get a little marshmallow in your lips. I'd like to think I've got over that stage now. I'm not a kid anymore. Well, but I will make a giant one of these. You must try them. Next up is bacon flavor crisps, frazzles. Amazing. The frazzles came in first just ahead of pickled onion flavor monster munch. Now, if you want to clear a room, you just open a bag of these and now eating them Whoa, you will get trumps in the morning. They bring about bad memories. When I was playing video games when I was younger with my friend, I used to eat pickled onion monster munch, pass me the remote control when we were playing like Sonic the Hedgehog and stuff, and there'd be pickled onion crisps all over it. Not good. Oh, I love that bacon smell. Sorry, when you open these, they're like, oh my goodness, bacon going, wow, straight out of the bag. They smell like bacon. They look like bacon, little bacon rashers, and mmm. <laughs> it tastes like it too. Now these are some fondant fancies, although I've noticed they've just been rebranded to French fancy, so maybe you can get them in France. Uh, they remind me of my grandparents. So they come in like a little tray like this, can you see that? Very pretty, you've got chocolate, strawberry and lemon flavour in there, and they're very good. So again, individually wrapped, a lot of wrapping going on today. Uh, so yeah, so this is the strawberry one. I'm just going to bite straight into it, right down it so you can see it all. Mm. Got cake, you got icing, and you've got that little bit of fondant right in the middle, can you see that? Oh my goodness. Now fondant fancies remind me of my grandparents because whenever I went to visit them, they would always magically have a fondant fancy there. And no matter how much you didn't want it, you would always end up eating it. So they would start with a nice approach. Oh, hello buddy. Would you like a nice fondant fancy? Then they'd do the mischievous approach. Oh buddy, I think I've run out of fondant fancies. Just kidding, there you go, eat it. Eat it. Hello, nice to meet you. Would you like a fondant fancy? Barry, please take the fondant fancy. Take the fondant fancy, Barry. Take it. Take it, Barry. Take the goddamn fondant fancy. 
Sorry, but it was just like that. So I grew up at my grandparents eating fondant fancies. Well, it was either that or celery, so that's how I keep my figure, really. So give these a try. Vanilla fondant cakes with a little bit of icing. Very addictive indeedy. Next up is Love Hearts. Some funky little sweets which I'm blaming as the root cause of teenage pregnancy here in the UK. So years ago, these sweets used to have really nice messages on, like, call me and write me a letter and you have nice ears, stuff like that. But nowadays, it's stuff like Wicked. It says Wicked on it. Or email me or poke me on Facebook. Please didn't take that the wrong way. Marry me. Marry me? If I'm a kid and I'm at school and I'm giving that to a little girl innocently, marry me, the next day she's gonna be expecting me to turn up with a ring. We are not going down that route, my friends. These are just nice sweets. Bottom line is, these are good sherbet sweets. They're hard, nice little crunch. You hear that crunch? <clears throat> Zingy. If you can get hold of them, give them a go but don't expect anything more. Next up is another old school sweet called a dip dab. Basically a strawberry lolly, it's in this little sachet like this. Boom, did you see that powder coming out right there? Strawberry lolly, and it's covered. That, my friends, I promise you is sherbet. There's nothing else, you got this? Mmm, mmm. So that's it about a dip dab really. It's a strawberry lolly, you dunk it in sherbet, mmm. Zingy, and you go to town, my friends. The only thing you've got to worry about is if you're having a little bit of an R. Kelly moment. My mind's telling me no! And you get the sherbet all over your face. That can happen. It's not a good look. So next up is some flying saucers. <laughs> These are pretty darn cool things. And I think quite recently they got voted the most popular sweet in the UK ever. Although that does kind of change every year. But it's like a Willy Wonka thing going on. Stop it. Can you hear that? edible paper with a sherbet in the middle. So normally you just stick the whole thing in your mouth, but let me just show you. But right inside edible paper, and in the middle, there's like little bits of sherbet right there. So, so, so good. Ooh, look, they're two-tone as well. There's nothing much else more to say to them, although here's a cool fact. One of my friend's mums managed to convince me up to the age of 24 that these actually came from outer space. Next up is popping candy. It's candy that pops. Yep, candy that pops. And the good thing is, it's suitable for vegetarians. So Brian Adams, thumbs up. Here we go. Mmm. A ha ha, a pop her, a pop her on my tongue. <coughs> wow, that's good. I think the one I got was sort of like a strong, super strong acid one. We'll go with that. So yeah, popping candy, super sweet, super poppy, obviously, and a little bit pointless, but I have seen people put it on cakes and donuts to surprise people. Oh, it pops, all that stuff. So maybe give that a try if you want. Uh, popping candy for me reminds me of a story of my old next door neighbor years ago, Matthew Bowen, all right, mate, if you're watching, years ago, it must've been about 12, uh, we went to get our hair cut, and we went in the shop next door and bought some popping candy beforehand, and we were eating it in the barbers, a little bit silly, I know, and my friend was getting his hair cut first, and we were making the person, the lady cutting his hair, uh, laugh. And she ended up taking a little snip with her scissors off his ear. A little bit of his ear. And he was like, ah! And at the time, we were just so young and innocent, we didn't know anything about it. But really, we could have sued that girl. Made some mourners. Last up is Cadbury's chocolate. Now, I am really passionate about Cadbury's chocolate, so please don't wind me up about it. Don't say, I can get that in my country, because I've been over to America in those international shelves. <gasps> You've got Cadbury's chocolate. That is not Cadbury's chocolate. All they've done is got some man go, oh yeah, I've got some mud. I've got some mud from the field, and I've got some Cadbury's chocolate wrappers. What we'll do is wrap the wrap around the mud and put it on the shelf. That is all it is. It is not the same, it tastes really weird, and they're corrupting your mind. This, my friends, is the trump card of Cadbury's chocolate right now. It is a Cadbury's flake, it's been around for years. There's an advert with a woman in a bath going, oh my gosh, I don't know what she's doing with that flake, but she is having some fun. It's quite essential chocolate, this one. You pull it back, and you've got this mighty chocolate log in there with shards running down the shaft. So, so good. But when you bite into it, what I tend to find sometimes, Half of it goes on the floor. You actually find yourself looking around on the floor for little bits of flake that have dropped off that you want to put back in your mouth. It tastes that good, it's so smooth and succulent, it could refloat the Titanic, my friends. Cadbury's flake. Oh, 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 got my jeans caught. No. So that's it my friends, that's 10 UK snacks I think you should try or investigate or research further. There's so many others I could show you, like Jaffa Cakes, Rainbow Drops, Humbugs, Bar Humbug, uh, Rock Candy, Sticks of Rock from the seaside where I live, all that stuff. I could have gone to town on this, but just thought I'd show you a few. If you've got anything from your country uh, that you want to send to me, get in touch, and as long as it's like individually wrapped still, no crazy stuff going on, I want to give it a try. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. I'll see you next time.